Joining me now is Michael Mann. He is the director of the Earth System Science Center at Penn State and the author of The New Climate War. Uh, it, it's good to have you back on, Michael, but when we do, it's never really good news. It, it, is what we're seeing now in Europe and elsewhere, fires, record temperatures, is it a case of reaping what we have sown and decades earlier predicted? And what could be around the corner if things continue this way? Yeah, thanks. It, it is good to talk with you, as it always is. But unfortunately, um, usually we don't have good news to discuss when we do speak. Uh, you know, what we're seeing here indeed is an example of reaping what we've sown. Uh, we have continued to warm the planet for decades through carbon pollution from fossil fuel burning. And that has now warmed the planet up to the point where the impacts of climate change aren't subtle anymore. We're seeing them play out in real time in the form of these unprecedented extreme weather disasters. And this summer, you know, is just the latest in a sequence of summers where we have seen record heat waves and wildfires and floods, uh, all a reminder that, um, again, the impacts of climate change aren't subtle anymore. We're now seeing the devastating consequences of human caused warming. It, it, it's important, I think, to remember that these events that we're seeing, these extreme events, are within the one and a half degree increase in temperatures uh, that we were warned about. We, you know, we often hear of the tipping point where things can't be clawed back or mitigated or reversed. What happens when the increase is two, 2.5 degrees? Yeah, and so, you know, the warming of the planet has proceeded pretty much as climate scientists like myself predicted decades ago, predicted, um, you know, the, the, the warming that would occur if we continued to sort of uh, remain on a business as usual trajectory of fossil fuel burning. And so the models have actually been quite accurate in predicting the warming that has occurred. Where the models have tended to underestimate uh, climate change is in the impacts of that warming, for example, on extreme weather events. And we increasingly understand that there are some subtle features in how the warming of the planet and the pattern of that warming, the fact that the Arctic is warming faster than the rest of the planet, that changes temperature differences between uh, the, the equator and the polar regions. And those temperature differences are what govern the jet stream this strong band of winds that moves weather systems along. And so what we're seeing is that uh, the warming has impacted the jet stream in a way that has created uh, these very persistent extreme weather events. And, and it really points to something that wasn't well captured in our models. Uh, an example of how you know, uh, uncertainty isn't our friend. Uh, in many respects, uh, we're, we're seeing that the consequences are greater than what our models predicted. But right. what the models do tell us is that if we bring our carbon emissions back down to zero, if we reduce our carbon emissions to zero, the planet will stop warming up. And when the planet stops warming up, then these other impacts tend to stabilize. And so, you know, while uh, there are uncertainties in the science and some of those uncertainties have led us to underestimate the consequences of the warming, the science does tell us that to a great extent our destiny is still in our hands. If we can move away from fossil fuel burning, decarbonize our economy and do so on a fairly rapid schedule, we can prevent the worst consequences. We can prevent this from getting even worse. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, people like you, I think we last talked around the, 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 the COP meeting, the, the, you know, people like you have said this for decades, really, and yet we're not getting to the, the goals that we need to have. I mean, uh, the, the talk versus action, when it comes to climate goals, commitments of governments, are those targets enough in size and importantly time frame, especially given the, the strength of the fossil fuel lobby and its influences? I mean, what, what are we facing even if pledges are kept at current levels? Yeah, I mean, and so, you know, certainly the fossil fuel industry and those promoting their agenda have been very effective in quashing efforts to, to you know, decarbonize our economy uh, as rapidly as we need to do. That having been said, even in the face of that opposition and uh, that resistance, we have seen quite a bit of uh, you know, uh, progress in recent years, 
in large part because, for example, the United States uh, has now returned to a position of leadership after having spent four years with the president uh, in Donald Trump, who really did everything he could to block global efforts to uh, act mm. uh, on climate. We the United States is back now in a leadership position, and, and I believe that um, that has brought um, other countries to the table. And we've seen commitments most recently in Glasgow. If you tally up the, the consequence of all of the commitments that were made by the countries of the world at the COP26 meeting in Glasgow last year, we now see commitments that could keep warming below two degrees Celsius. Um, below three and a half Fahrenheit or so. We, we are now uh, on a trajectory no longer where we're looking at four degrees Celsius warming uh, by the end of the, the, the century, but maybe something more like two degrees Celsius warming. That's still too much. Yeah. We need to keep warming even lower, below one and a half degrees Celsius to prevent the worst consequences. And by the way, Promises are one thing. It's easy to make commitments. It's something else to keep them. And so we've seen some progress. We've seen carbon emissions stop increasing, and that's good news. But the bad news is that's not enough. We can't just flatten those emissions. We've got to bring them down to zero, and we've got to do so rapidly. So we've got to do a whole lot more work. And here in the United States, these midterm elections coming up this fall are really going to determine whether we are able to meet our commitments um, which, of course, is critical to convincing other countries around the world to meet theirs as well. Well, of course, uh, there, there, there's one Democratic senator in Joe Manchin who's stopping Joe Biden's climate uh, uh, initiatives from moving ahead. So, uh, yeah, there might be uh, good, good uh, agendas out there, but they're not getting done. And uh, I, think, I think the lesson is uh, we, this is happening at under one and a half. So if people are scared about what's going on now, what's going to happen in the future? Uh, Got to leave it there. Uh, Michael Mann, as always, appreciate you coming on. Uh, thank you. Always great to talk with you.